Here is the amazing Canon 50mm 1.4. Hello, welcome, I'm Matt here. Today I have another lens video for you. This is lens review number 38, and I just quickly had a look at some of the videos I've done. 24 M-mount lenses, and this will be the 10th Leica thread mount lens. 34 film camera videos, of which 18 medium format cameras, 16 thread 5mm cameras, and then 55 Leica related videos on top of that, plus all the others that don't fit into those categories. Today we have the famous Japanese Summerlux 50mm 1.4 lens, as it's often called. The real name is the Canon 50mm 1.4 LTM, like a thread mount or like a screw mount lens. So what can I tell you about the Canon 50mm 1.4? This lens dates back to mid 1950s, I think around 1957, obviously made in Japan. And it's often compared to the Nikkor 50 1.4, that's a rangefinder Nikon lens and the older Leica Summerlux 50mm 1.4. So if you read all the forums, there's often comparisons of which is best, the Canon 50.1.4, the Nikon 50.1.4, or the Leica 50.1.4 of that period. Now many do say that the Canon is better than the, the Summerlux, but potentially the Nikon is the best of the bunch. I'm sure we've probably just started a war, so feel free to comment below on which you think is the best of those three. The Canon 51.4 is often also compared to the Leica Summerit 51.5. I also have that lens, so maybe one day when I get time, I'll do a shootout. Summerit 51.5 versus Canon 51.4 versus Nikkor 51.4. I do have the Nikkor, but I have the Nikkor S mount, which will not fit a Leica without using an adapter. More to come on that in future videos. So if I take the lens off the Leica screw mount camera, for a lot of you, you'll probably be using like M-mount cameras, whether it's for an adapter onto your Fuji or Sony or whatever. So all you need is a like a thread mount, like a M-mount adapter, and then it'll screw on nicely onto your M-mount. So now we've got it on my Leica M240. So let's quickly cover the basics of this lens. I'll try and tell you all you need to know and keep the video as short as possible and also include some example photos. So you have a maximum aperture of f1.4 through to f22. And the lens has a close focus distance of one meter or 3.5 feet, obviously through to infinity. The lens has one stop aperture clicks, so no half stops on this older lens. For those of you really into your lenses, this is a six element in four groups kind of optical formula. And it has a front filter thread of 48 mil, which is quite unusual. I'll show you the 51.8 in a second side by side when we get to size and weight. If you don't want to risk accidentally losing your original lens cap that came with the lens, I'll just use a cheap clip on. 49mm eBay filter and because they're squidgy it gives you a bit of flex so a 49mm push-on filter will fit this lens so that's what I use. In terms of lens hood you can either use a 48mm screw-in hood obviously into the lens filter or you can use a 50mm clamp-on hood which is the original hood I think it's called an S50 and it works the same as with the as I say 1.8 where it, it clamps on the outside of the, the front of the lens. I don't own the S50 hood but I would recommend a hood as you'll see as we go through this video. As already mentioned this is a screw mount rangefinder lens meaning it is rangefinder coupled. So this lens should work accurately with any of your rangefinder cameras. As I say you can use it on M cameras via an adapter. You can use it on like a screw mount camera such as this Barnack like a 3 camera and perhaps some of the other screw mount cameras, obviously the, the Canon rangefinders themselves, which it, it was designed for. And then other screw mount cameras, maybe the Voigtlander Besser R is another great screw mount camera. And then some of the cheaper Soviet rangefinder cameras. All of those cameras will accept this lens because they all use the same L39 screw mount. One point to mention, as I mentioned it in a previous video, so I should probably cover it. This lens has a long focus throw. So it goes from, how would you call it, say 12 o'clock, all the way around to six o'clock. So it is a long focus throw. Many lenses would have say 12 o'clock to three o'clock. So I'm talking about, if you look at the front of an old fashioned kind of clock face, you've got 12, one, two, three. It goes from 12 around to six, so 180 degrees on this lens, where many lenses have only kind of 12 to three, so 90 degrees. Advantage of a longer focus throw is more accurate focusing. Disadvantage of a longer focus throw is slower to focus. So if you're a street shooter, you kind of crank in the lens around, trying to trying to get your focus before someone comes. If you've got a short focus throw, you can literally just twist your, your wrist and you can get your shot. 
if it had a short focus throw so long focus throw and also it's probably worth mentioning the lens has a focus lock i know some people don't like that so when you go to infinity it locks and then it will not move you have to press down twist to release the focus lock i know some people take these off afterwards but they don't really bother me too much okay if i take the lens off for a second i'll quickly show you the size difference compared to a similar lens you could say and that is the 51.8 canon which i've reviewed before i'll put a link to this lens review below so if you can see that the bigger lens is 1.4 smaller lens 1.8 40 mil filter thread 48 mil filter thread 1.8 maximum aperture 1.4 maximum aperture which lens is best that is the question i'll cover that at the end of the video so stay with me also while they're in my hands in terms of weight 246 grams for the 1.4 canon which is 8.7 ounces 188 grams or 6.6 .6 ounces so this is a smaller more compact lighter lens this is a faster lens so are they the same other than that not quite wait to the end it's coming <laughs> Okay, so probably what's more important to you is how does the lens perform on the camera? So I did a few kind of crude test shots yesterday just to show you how it performs and then I'll show you some real examples. So first up, lens flare. How does this lens perform in terms of lens flare? If you shoot directly at the sun, you'll get images like this. So you'll see you can get a kind of a rainbow uh, circular highlight. And then you also get, I'm not sure how you could describe it, kind of a spread of light is you get like the streaks of light coming from the light source going towards the edge of the image from the center to the edge so i've noticed this both shooting at the sun and shooting at strobes here's a real example of shooting at a light source and you can see the circular effect from the, the, the lens flare potentially you can use this to your creative advantage and i was having quite a bit of fun with this when shooting the models in poland if you want less flare either use a lens hood or don't shoot directly at the light if you block the actual light source by say a model's head the lens flare is much reduced and you can see in this example you get some veiling flare but but it's not quite so overwhelming so when shooting film i'm not too scared because i know as long as i block the sun with the the model's head or a, a, a subject the flare is kind of drastically reduced and if i want the crazy rings to shoot directly at the sun all of those photos were shot without a lens hood now in terms of bokeh this lens is not known for its swirly bokeh but if you see this example image shot in the garden yesterday just a test photo you can see it is kind of starting to almost swirl i wasn't aiming to get swirly bokeh that's just how the photo came out in most kind of real life situations i've not seen so much of the bokeh swirl and i just find it kind of a pleasing out of focus background here's a quick bokeh test again shot in the garden yesterday ahead of the video shot at f1.4 f2 f2.8 and f4 just to show you how the bokeh changes at the the wider apertures now because this lens is only designed to focus at one meter what if you want even more bokeh to have more bokeh you need to get close to your subject how do you get close to your subject you watched one of my previous videos which i released recently where i showed the seven artisans close focus adapter you can only use the close focus adapter on like an mount camera so something like the like a cl that i use like a sl like a sl2 or maybe some of the panasonic cameras which also now have l mount that will let you get closer and then as you get closer as you can see in this example your shallow depth of field becomes much greater because you're getting close to your subject so don't feel you're limited to the one meter close focus distance that's only true if you're using film cameras or like m out without a close focus adapter vignetting being a classic fast lens you're going to expect some vignetting so i shot this kind of white wall and i slightly underexposed the image just to show you the kind of the darkening of the corners personally i really like the kind of vignette look and i add that to my mr like a presets anyway so getting it in camera is perfect for my taste but if you want less vignetting, stop the lens down and kind of by f4, f5.6, the, the vignetting is, is almost gone. Now for me, one of the most important aspects of a fast lens is how sharp it is or how usable it is wide open. I'm happy to report that even when shooting films, such as in this ugly mug mirror selfie, you can see that the lens is sharp wide open when shot into a mirror, as you can see with my Lycra M4P in this example. You can almost read all the writing on the front of the lens that is pretty impressive for a 1.4 lens so how do i use the lens personally i tend to shoot it at 1.4 on digital kind of all day long as they say and 
I'm more than happy. And then for film, I often shoot it to F2 for a little bit more sharpness. But if the light is low or I want a really kind of super soft kind of filmic look, shooting film, it makes sense, I would shoot it at 1.4. This lens is kind of my secret weapon, along with the Leica Scimitar 50mm F2. Those two lenses are my kind of now go-to lenses for female portraits, where they're looking for that kind of softer look. Any of you who are one of my patrons already will know that I'm taking photos in addition to the ones that I share publicly, and those can be viewed through the Patreon account. Those photos tend to be more adult style and for kind of more skin female portraits. This lens is fantastic. So this is one of my go-to lenses for kind of sensual semi-nude type photos because it, you really can't use a, a super sharp lens because the model is just gonna kind of punch you in the face <laughs> when they see the result. So my top tip is probably do not use the Voigtlander 35mm Ultron uh, 1.7 lens, which I reviewed recently. That lens is too sharp for female portraits on digital. On film, it's okay. This lens is the model's best friend. I say 1.4 and it's nice kind of glow, almost glow look. Soft enough, yet sharp enough, so you kind of get the best of both. Perfect for female portraits. And finally, what about colour rendition? Uh, you come to the wrong channel. This is a black and white photography channel. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. Uh, yes, if you follow my work on Instagram and things, you know that I shoot 99.9% .9 females in black and white. But I do occasionally shoot colour. And that's often when this blue sky environment overseas with nice sunny, sunny skies. Here are a few examples shot in colour when I was taking photos in Portugal. I would say the lens gives a soft pastel look and it's extremely pleasing to the eye. One of my favourite lenses for kind of colour rendition. It's not overpowering and oversaturated but it's still kind of really rich. Does that make any sense? The colour photos shot on digital have more of a kind of a filmic look because they're slightly undersaturated and more pastel, which is perhaps more what you'd expect for, say, shooting portraits on Kodak 400 film, for example. So very pleasing for colour photos. And when the sun comes out and we're allowed to travel again, I'll be taking this lens overseas for, for, more, for more trips. OK, so before we finish, here are a few more photos shot with this lens. So the first photos you see here are shot on film and they'll be shot either 1.4 or f2. I never stop the lens down more than f2. And now these photos are shot on digital, either the Leica M240, which is full frame, or the Leica CL, which is a crop sensor. If you want to see all these photos in full res, just visit my Flickr feed and you'll be able to see which camera and which film, if film was being used. Okay, so the question you might have is, would I recommend this lens? And if so, would I recommend the 51.4 or the 51.8? Tough question. I'd say both, they're that amazing. But obviously most people don't want both. So if you want a small, super sharp, less character lens, dare I say, get the 51.8. It's sharp at 1.8. It does exactly what you want it to do. And it performs maybe more like a modern lens, but still with a lot more character. If you want bags of character and a bit softer, wide open, get the 51.4. If you want the best of both, Try and find both on eBay. <laughs> the advantage is the Canon 51.8 for any of you on a tighter budget is maybe three times, two to three times cheaper than the 1.4. And I guess that's a good time to talk about price. Price of the 51.4 Canon. The price vary widely, but I looked in Europe, the price seems to be around 350 to 450 although there's very few listed at the time of making this video, which is February 2021. If you look in the US, all the lenses seem to be listed as in Asia for around $200 to $350. And then if you're in Europe trying to buy worldwide, again, they're all listed in Japan. And for us in the UK, they're listing from $150 to £250, obviously plus all the import taxes and things now because of Brexit. So, so basically 99% of all these lenses are in Japan, but you may find it's still cheaper to pay your import fees and import it from Japan than to pay kind of over the odds and buy it locally, either in the UK, Europe or the US.
So that's all I've got for you, the Canon 50mm 1.4, one of my favourite lenses for female portraiture and highly recommend for anybody using screw mount lenses, M mount lenses or anybody using M mount lenses on non Leica cameras. If you use Canon 50mm lenses, are you a 1.4 shooter or a 1.8 shooter? Let me know in the comments below. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button and then hopefully the video gets seen by a wider audience and everyone can benefit from these amazing vintage lenses. I really wish someone had told me about these lenses when I'd first started my film photography and like photography seven, eight years ago. I lose track of the years. It wasn't until after buying M mount glass that I then discovered these amazing Canon lenses. I'm like, why didn't someone tell me sooner? <laughs> so that's it. And again, lastly, a massive thanks to my patrons. There are additional photos posted on Patreon as well as the extra videos, the extra posts, editing tips, lighting tips. It's quite a big list of things on Patreon. I try and post there daily or maybe five times a week if I can. So lots of extra content if you run out of things to watch on YouTube. That's it. Thanks for watching. See you in a few days. Bye.